this light bulb's burnt out, and of course, it's an expensive one. And of course, it uh, came out of that fixture over there on the wall. The question is, can we put an LED light bulb in the same box without any problems? Of course we can. And of course manufacturers originally manufacture a lighting item or a hardware item that uses proprietary expensive light bulbs and not the cheap LED ones. Okay, maybe uh, LED light bulbs aren't too cheap either, but they last, I don't know, tens of thousands of hours and this one three months and this only comes on this light uh, in, in the night. It's got a photo cell for its switch. So it's only on, I don't know, eight hours a day, just on average all year round at this latitude here in the Pacific Northwest. So can this be converted to an LED light housing without removing the whole thing? Of course it can. It's fairly straightforward. Just disconnect two wires. Super simple. I'll show you. And then this heat shield comes out with these three small screws. Very straightforward. Middle, side, side. And then what you have is that uh, wiring mess upstairs. There. Let's just climb it with the phone going. Alright, this wiring mess. Now, what you need to do is, that's a capacitor that will retain electrical charge, a huge amount of it, even if the light bulb is burnt out. So when you disconnect one something, ground it, make sure it's grounded to a pipe like so, every single wire, okay, because you don't know which one is going to be sparky sparky. The wires leading to either the capacitor or this transformer. Now the wires coming out of the pipe, there which are your supply voltage of course leave those alone there's no need to touch the ground the uh, live wires okay we're just discharging the capacitor okay these plastic things are so fried that they are brittle and they just break away you cannot possibly save them so just cut everything out Make sure that you leave the original little pigtail that was leading to this socket here. That's the white one. I'm just going to have to cut the wire there. And the black one, I'm going to cut the wire there. I mean, we're going to just connect this black and white to that pair of black and white, and we're done. And I'm going to get rid of all of this proprietary garbage there that doesn't need to be there. The socket is a standard Edison socket. So an E26, an E26 standard light bulb will fit into it and will work fantastically well. And uh, it says maximum 175 watts. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put a 10 watt high lumen LED light bulb into it. And that's gonna be the end of it. This proprietary mess here. And there, so that would be the battle plan here. So, the removed components are back on the ground there, we'll look at it in a sec. And here is all this space, so fairly straightforward, yeah? White to white, black to black, alright? Don't get electrocuted, work as ever with proper electrician's tools, insulated handles, whatever. And uh, of course, goes without saying, if you're not sure about all this, how to do it, just get an electrician. It can be done very straightforward, just like this. So this is how the finished installation looks like. That's all there is to it. All it needs is a light bulb. Now if you're wondering what this ground wire is doing here, eh, there's nowhere to connect it to, so nothing. Next thing to do is the seal around the housing here. You can see that this gasket is, or seal is hanging and uh, there is a uh, weevil beetle there inside the case. Yeah, that one is a fried one. And there is also some kind of deposit that washes down in the middle. So it looks like this gasket failed to seal here, right around where it's twisted underneath my little finger. There, so uh, make sure it's put back flat. 
without any twist to it because if water does get into this unit now it got extremely hot and uh, hence the condensation that's visible even though it's this dimpled glass it's still visible some condensation there yeah, there shouldn't be any water inside this housing here I found this smaller 800 lumen light bulb uh, this will work for a test run here let's see Oh yes, Houston, we've got touchdown. Okay, so that works. So, fantastic installation Installation here is proven to work. Now, this gasket here lies flat in this position, something like that. And when you place it onto the frame, it comes with these small legs and this little thickened part here. Okay, so this is what you do with it. Place it through the hole like so and then how do I do this with one hand yeah then pull on it pull the thickened part there pull the thickened part through it like so okay so this way the gasket stays in place very straightforward so I'm trying to iron out this part which used to be wrinkled there and because this whole thing is powered and I was working on it while under power that's why it's important to have uh, good insulated tools and following safe installation and safe work practices all right so this one is in the can well not quite a Champs-Élysées here but it's good enough to keep people from tripping here in the dark and the tools that I used very simple Phillips number two screwdriver side cutters wire stripper I use this one this eight millimeter wrench to remove these two bolts that held this transformer aka ballast that's the label or nameplate on this ballast here there we go and it leads to a 10 microfarad capacitor which is parking over here so that's basically the carnage and uh, that's how you can deal with this kind of misery caused by this proprietary light bulb and fixture situation done so now what do I do with this stuff that's piling on the deck here I don't know oh I got an idea Gentech 10 microfarad capacitor for sale. Anybody with a matching ballast 122, 77, and 347 input voltage. Anybody for sale 